Hey everybody, welcome back to Durbin's Bourbon, I'm Joe. And I'm Josh. Uh, the voice you may have heard seconds ago was my wife yelling at our dogs. Today's... I, wasn't, I thought she was yelling at me. Hey, get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. Uh, today's whiskey review oh, is <laughs> Lagavulin, uh, Game of Thrones... House of Lannister? House of Lannister... Whatever that means if you're a Game of Thrones fan. Yes, it was. It, it is a pretty big series, I guess. <laughs> I haven't watched it myself. Um, how many year age statement is this? Nine, Nine? years. Yep. Nine years. Uh, we have done some reviews on the 16 year age statement, which I'm a big fan of. Yes, great product. Running price for the 16 year is uh, you're gonna you're gonna burn through a C note. It's about a hundred bucks. Uh, to buy that one, I got it on sale for eighty nine though. This one here, like last year, was this one. This one, no, this one's about sixty. Yes, I, got, I bought this one because, um, like he said, I I haven't watched Game of Thrones. I know I like it, but I haven't just I haven't gone down that rabbit hole yet. But since it was a nine year lag of one, I wanted the eight year, which wasn't on the shelf, right. so I bought that. And then the eight year came out, right. or it came to our state and. About six months later, probably, did it? and you picked it up. Yeah. Did I pick it up in our state, or did I get it when yeah, I, I was on vacation? It came here. Oh crap! Because I didn't get I'm like, well, I got the nine. Right. That's close enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I just lo- I love Lagavulin uh, sixteen years, so I yeah. knew this would be good. Yeah, Lagavulin, and it's interesting when you look at reviews. Um, the the whiskey reviews compared the eight year to the sixteen year, and a lot of the reviews actually said the eight t- the eight year was right. superior um i have an eight year behind me i think we did a review of it i'm not sure i know we've done a comparison on the 16 years we did some oxidation yeah. with an old one to a new one um and whatnot for that uh it is a very good whiskey i kind of i can understand how they would say the eight year is um better it's not necessarily better it's just a different characteristic maybe uh, smoother or for whatever reason, more maybe there's more uh, like the youngness to it. Maybe you get more of the grain or the more smoke or something. Right. The barrel doesn't take it out. Who knows? Right. I mean, somebody does. Um, but not yeah. Us. Uh, and this one being a nine year, uh, Josh snagged it. I almost got one, but I'm like, why should I waste my money when he's already bought one? Smart. And thinking. I can drink it because yep. he does the same thing. Right. I have a lot of whiskeys that he doesn't have. Both of us do. Um, there's no sense in double them up when we're doing shows right. for you all so um it's just more more buying power for right. you to enjoy and if you don't already um, know lagavulin's a an isla, isla scotch, scotch yeah. isla whatever scotch isla so scotch. it's smoky peaty delightfulness oh my god and it's coming in at 92 proof or 46 percent abv none of that 80 proof we can tell there's no color added yep, it's got no a nice color. nice honey well not even honey almost hay yeah a light hay color oh, that nose i kind of miss i haven't had a smoky scotch in a while i haven't either so typically uh, with your isla uh scotches you know they typically use the peat bogs they dry them they utilize that as the um fire source or the the smoke source for drying out hey, the malted barley. What was that show um, on YouTube about the scotch? Do you remember what that was called? Was it on YouTube or Amazon? Um, it is Amazon and possibly Netflix. It's called Scotch Whiskey. It's not on Netflix. I remember. It's not. Yeah, because I had to. So it's on Amazon Prime. But what it was it called? called Scotch Whiskey uh, and Isla. It was mostly um, Glamorangy or whatever. Oh, that, that one. one. That was a different one. That was on a YouTube? great one. That was on Amazon Prime. Yeah. So, anyways, there's a there's a really good. Uh, it's, like, it's like neat. I don't know if you if you haven't seen neat for bourbon. It's it's like that. It just goes through their whole process and in Scotland and how they make everything. It's very uh, educational, but also a well-done documentary, so right. it's not boring. It brings you into the personalities that make the whiskey Correct. and the passion behind it, mm-hmm. which I think imparts, whether you believe it or not, I believe the passion that it takes to create a fine whiskey carries over into right. the final product, um, especially when you're a whiskey 
um, fan like we are and you can look back on the history and the time frame and the and the love that has gone into create it mm -hmm. and it just makes it that much more um, but yeah this does have that heavy peat um, there is a measurement for phenols um, like your Ardbeg, your Lagavulin um, they are very high on the uh, phenol, phenol scale for how much parts per million you're gonna pick up with that peat mm -hmm. Some people, it is not their cup of tea. It is, I mean, it sticks with you, lingers in the mouth. You're going to taste it for quite some time afterwards. Um, but so once you get used it, to it and you like it, it is an acquired taste. There. Right. It's an acquired uh -huh. taste. And some people, right out of the chute, they'll try it and they're like, that is amazing. It reminds me of being at a campfire mm -hmm. on the beach. Right. Because you have the iodine, the camphor. The, the peat, the smoke from the sea salt and everything. So. And, it's all, and, you know, obviously, Isla, it's on an island, so you do get the barrels are in sea air right. the whole time they're aging. So you do right. get that. It is. It's like a campfire at the beach. Yep, it is. It's just delightful. And I, I haven't even brought it to my nose. Oh, it smells so and good. this area that's right here <laughs> is, you Smoky. can smell smoke. I mean, we hope you all are having a drink with us. Yes. It doesn't have to be an Isla. It can be a bourbon. It can be an Irish. It can be a Canadian. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Have a have, drink. Have some, have sit a down and watch have the show. Wine and have a beer or wine. Exactly. Um, but yeah, you can pick up that peat, man. It's kind of very sweet. After the smoky, I'm getting the sweetness. Yeah. I'm going to hmm. slide back in for another nose. But yeah, that peat takes Ooh. over. Yeah, there's that camphor smell too. That that medicinal. I do get the like the under the, underneath the the heavy smokiness of it. You get the the green apple scotch. Yes. Um, grain. The green apple I characteristic. Kind of fight through that smoke though. But, yep, oh, it's so, there. So good. It smell. is there. Boy, that's got a good nose mm, to yeah, it. Yeah, it does. Um. Here's a tip. If you are doing a tasting Just or anything like that, um, <laughs> you, you never want to start out with a Isle Scotch if you're going to like Irish or even bourbons um, yeah. because the the peat is so strong mm. and it's so oily it's that it smoky. coats the mouth. And so your following drams that you drink will be, you won't get a true... A palette on it because the uh, scotches that are Isle and really peated right. they dominate your palate for hours afterwards so you always want to finish with a, with a with a smoky scotch if you're Agreed. doing a tasting or a nosing right if you're hosting it yeah, you start with this you're ruining the rest of them you're right gonna, you're gonna be like, so, ah, it tastes like smoke <laughs> right so that's a, a tip there and most of your uh, folks that conduct tastings and stuff um, we'll always do that. They'll finish with a, a peaty scotch. Yep. If if scotch is on the menu. And if you're doing all peated scotches, it doesn't really matter. No. Boy, that's that's kind of great. Oh, I geez. love Lagavulin. It's such a good <laughs> I haven't had a... I really I haven't had a... I haven't sipped a peated scotch in a couple months at least. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's been a while. What's wrong with me? Ugh. That yeah, there is some... There's... There is a little bit of that green apple yeah. that you got to hunt you, you for. You get it, it under the in smoke. The back. Yeah. I'm going to add some water here after we do an initial taste. Yeah. Because the water know, opens them up. I'm super excited. Um, Come on, let's taste it. <laughs> we hope you all are enjoying the show. And uh, what do you say? Should we go in for a taste of this? I think so. Let's do Cheers, it. Pal. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Sweet, smoky. Mm. Boy, that's <laughs> that. It, it hits my giggle button. <laughs> it really does. Um, Don't make me spit out my delicious Scott. <laughs> your giggle button. Um, it's just got Man. such a depth to it, and there's. I love how the rich. smoke is just. All the flavors you're getting with the, there's like a sweetness to it, the grainy, the green apple, all that stuff, but it's like infused with smoke. Right. God, it's good. It's like a good smoked meat. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. You know, you get Gotta all those brisket. sweet characters. Oh, yes. Man. You get all those those caramely characteristics of a good smoked brisket. Mm-hmm. With that fat, fat's all fat, rendered. Yeah. Rendered. Rendered. Rendered in. in. That would be a good thing to pair with a smoked brisket. So when you make your smoked brisket, will hopefully be invited over. Mm. I may or may not bring a bottle of scotch (laughs) to (laughs) accommodate that invite. See, that's Um, how you got to work it. You'd be like, well, you know, running low on scotch. Yeah. Um, But as it sits and opens up a a minute, you're going to put some water in it, huh? I am. There's some... uh, it's so good to me. There's some. Damn it. Should we get the other water or is it the other water? Nah, it's filtered. You should probably be fine. It's going to ruin it. Um, As it sits, the honey characteristics. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's, there's, there's so much out. going on with the. Once you get that, like I said, that initial smokiness, there's so much underneath that. Yeah, all that all that Scotch flavor of mm-hmm. honey, hay, uh, green apple, a little tartness. Yeah, yeah, a little caramel even almost. Yeah, uh, I could see a little caramel. I put two very small drops. It may not make any difference. Um, nose. Yeah, I'm getting a lot more of the out. hay on the more of the earthy tones at the end now. So good, man! I forgot how good a smoky oh, scotch. Oh no! Is. I can't believe I haven't been so good. Water. I'd pay. I yeah. That's. I mean, for sixty bucks or whatever. All mm. day long. All day long. How's it with the water? It brought out all the sweet characteristics of the apple. And did it subdue the smoke a little? Probably just a hint, yeah. but not much. We can't, smoke, yeah, you can't get that smoke out yeah, of there. <laughs> the smoke is still there, but it brought some of the sweet characteristics out. Um, it could probably tolerate even a little more right. water. Um, actually, I really enjoyed it with a drop or two of water. It was really good. Uh, a great whiskey if you're into peated scotches. Um, it, Even if you're if you're having. trying to delve into peated scotches, this is a. I mean, it's pretty peaty, but I think it's a good one. It's not as harsh as like an Ardbeg or Lag or Lafroig. No, um, it's so it's, it's like kind of some, but it's Lafroig. also not. I mean, I would probably more go on the way of like a like a Jim Beam Black to get into smoking like scotches because it's got. If less, you're a bourbon person, yeah. If you're just trying to, to like, well, you know, I want to try this. But I don't know though. It's so good. You might it's, just you might like instantly be like, oh, yeah. that's because bourbon's a that's a rough spirit. I mean, bourbon, it's, it's, it, it's, it punches you in the mouth. You right. know? And that's kind of what peated scotches do too. They do. So if you're I, an I, Irish drinker, yeah, this would be. Um, this might be a big stretch jumping into it, yeah. but or with Canadian the, whiskey is more yes. sweet and. But with the apple characteristics that we're yeah. picking up, with a little bit of water, might make it. Um, accessible for mm-hmm. you. Um, we have a good friend of ours, Steve. He's an Irish whiskey drinker. I'd like to introduce him to some of these. Now, have tried any? I don't know. Um, Steve, you usually comment. Um, let us know if you have tried some. If not, the bar is open, yeah. my friend. You come over and we'll we'll crack some of these. He may have tried some. I don't know when he was here last. I can't remember. Mm. Um, I, don't know. I wasn't invited. <clears throat> It, I think you were working, bro. It probably was. <laughs> um, great whiskey, nine year compared to the uh, eight year. I think they're, they're probably very pretty comparable. similar. They gotta I, be. I really can't tell much of a difference. I think there's a um, there's another one too for the um, guy on Parks and Rec, Keith Oberman or whatever. Yeah, I think Oberman. Anyways, he's got one. I think it's a twelve year, ten year. Mm, that'd be interesting. No, it's like in his. It's kind of like this. It's a little gimmicky, but. I mean, anytime you get a, you know, age statement scotch that's delicious, right. why not? As long as it's not super expensive. Right. And there's a whole series of Game of Thrones yeah. scotches that Lagavulin did. Well, um, they did they did it with a bunch of different, like Johnny Walker has one. Right, there's like they a do. Whole, yeah, a bunch of different Which if whiskeys. you're into that, you probably already know. But Yeah, uh, and if you're not, it's still delicious, them. yeah. This right. one's good. I bet the others, House of Lannister is this one. I bet the others are equally as good. Um, I think it's hard to go wrong with a good peated scotch, right. especially a distiller that has been around for as long as these guys have. And if you're 
if you like the the eye lace scotches and the heavy peats mm-hmm. and all that, you, you like just can't, can't go, go wrong. wrong. Yeah. yeah, it's not as punch you in the face like Josh said as your Lafroigs. Um, Ardbeg is probably the next one closest to that on phenols and stuff for softness. Mm-hmm. And it depends on which Ardbeg you get because there's a big difference between yeah. the expressions and ABVs. Right. Um, and lo- most of the hard bags are non chill filtered and all correct. that, so they're a little more oily. Stick mm-hmm. around a little longer. They are. Yep. Yep. Is this non chill filtered? <clears throat> I don't know that it said anywhere on it there. Doesn't. Yeah. Um, so you never know if it is non chill filtered, and that's not a horrible thing. No. We're just kind of purists. We like. I'd rather. Yeah, well, I like the non chill filtered yeah. as close as possible mm-hmm. to. Um, a clean product coming out that's been unadulterated in any way or stripped of any of its characteristics, flavor, scotch mist, if you will, or any of that, um, I want to drink it. So it's just um, the kind of the geekiness coming out, right. I think, in us. But great whiskey. Price point is great. Availability, probably still out there because this is a, a popular series. It'll probably go in syndication. So if you can find it, uh, grab it. Yeah. Grab the other varieties. Give them a whirl. If you're a peated Scotch drinker, you're gonna love it. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. Um, I love it. Josh love loves it. it. It's a great whiskey. Highly recommended. Price point is good. Yep. Remember to hit the thumbs up. Subscribe. Subscribe. Share us with your friends. And most of all, we hope you're having a drink with us. Yep. And as always, enjoy your whiskeys and bourbons any, any way you like. like. Cheers, everybody. Cheers.